All right, Pip. What's up? Turn left onto the I-85 uh, Turn left onto the I-85 North Ramp, which has been uh, the story for our day. So, uh, Pat and I are on our way up to New York Comic Con. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these car talk videos. Pat doesn't necessarily love being on them, but I wanted you to know that I have friends. Um, it's important to me <laughs> that the audience knows. Pat voluntarily agreed to spend 10 to 12 hours in a car with me. Are you are you debating that? Uh, well, excellent. All right, so we're we're on our way to to New York Comic Con. It's pretty exciting. A uh, what would you what would you call them? We can't shout them out. That wouldn't be polite. But like, what would you call our uh, our very well covered fellow? A business associate, I suppose. He's no longer really a client. A business type friend has uh, invited us to the New York Comic Con pop launch party, which is pretty exciting. I'm not normally a, uh, a big collector of pops, but I really, really like their company from a business uh, perspective. Watching their booth grow year over year at Toy Fair has always been very, uh, very, very exciting. And then obviously today is the, the big Nerf Ultra nonsense day. And I think the most polite thing that we can do about that after our, um, Consequent inducing, consequence inducing honesty fueled video is probably just let that one go. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it again when we get our uh, our model in. Uh, but we we ordered one off Amazon just like everybody else. Uh, we actually don't recommend doing that. It seems like a, a terribly designed product, but uh, we we owe it to to our audience to do that due diligence and purchase one. Uh, so that we can we can make snappy styrofoam peanut darts uh, our own self. Um, so, uh, other than that, we're just on our way to New York Comic Con. If there's anything that you really want to see there, anybody that we should meet, any uh, anything super cool to do in New York City right now that's somewhat uh, super exclusive or anything like that, just uh, let us know. That's going to be the rest of uh, the week, realistically. Um, I think we're spending tonight somewhere in Virginia uh, because we have to pick up Pat's dad actually and then from there it's it's on to New York so that's pretty exciting what else is going on in Nerf world Pat that we should talk about I try and make the car talk videos about seven or eight minutes long not ten minutes that would be too good for the algorithm we don't want people to watch them Oh uh, yeah, other people are getting uh, their Dart Zone Pros, which is actually really exciting. Um, hurt my feelings a little bit that the first uh, the first review was just like, let's see if Drac was telling the truth, and it's like, yo, like, duh. Um, but I also, I get it, like, uh, due diligence. So Jangular seemed pretty happy with his. Luke seemed really happy with his, which was very exciting. Um, as they're both kind of big players in competitive nerf and feel the same way that I do about what it means for the space. Like, I'm just very, very excited about that. I heard from uh, JMOM that they're gonna be sponsoring the Ragnarok Oktoberfest 5v5, and I think that's a perfect marriage of product to community. Uh, I'm really excited about that, of course. When we win again, um, I, will, I will not be accepting a, uh, a Dart Zone Pro as I have two of them now. Um, I have the one that I ordered, which arrived uh, before we left, and then I have the one that was given to us to make content with, which we hydro dipped. Uh, we're catching like the very end of daylight here somewhere in North Carolina, so it's going to get dark over the course of this vlog. Uh, but that's pretty exciting. The one thing that I do want to talk about is my model had a very sturdy stock, so like in the spirit of... Um, some things were different, some things were the same. It looks like from some of these photos that it's almost like a crapshoot. Some models have the tab inside uh, the right way, some of them have them the wrong way. Uh, I guess that wasn't made clear or what have you. I, I don't really know how you could make such an egregious error, but I guess it's not easy to catch when all you're doing is test fitting parts. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure, but it seems like some of the stocks are pretty good and then some of the stocks collapse instantly. The only good news about that is that it is a mil-spec buffer tube, so it'll take any stock, and since the issue seems to be with the stock itself, 
Uh, it's not that big a deal. So like that's been interesting news floating around Facebook world the last couple of days. Uh, you can put any proprietary stock on it, but actually fixing it seems to be difficult because unfortunately uh, the stocks are solvent welded shut, which I did not notice when I was making my original teardown breakdown video because I couldn't think of any reason to take the stock apart, so I didn't. Um, but that's a little upsetting. Other than that, uh, the product seems to be doing pretty well. What else is uh, what else is going on? Uh, the CETA just launched another kit that nobody seems to be very interested in. Uh, but we've confirmed that the springs will work in a Dart Zone Pro, apparently. Number one reason to buy a CETA spring is to put it in a better plaster. That's, that's pretty rough. That's like saying, I bought a bottle of Pepsi so I could pour it out and fill it with Coca-Cola. Um, I feel like, oh, that video hasn't launched yet. I was about to be like, I feel like we've brutalized the CETA enough, but I guess publicly we haven't done it at all yet. Um, fun fact, that's coming. Uh, other than that, we, uh, we got our X-Shot Influencer Package, which is very exciting. I think it's very uh, interesting that the day they release um, what appear to be electroplated gold guns for influencers is the same day that Hasbro's like, oh, we electroplated a, uh, a gold rival, or not rival, Ultra One uh, for a trophy. So that's that's sort of fun, sort of cool. I honestly just really like that companies are doing that in small batches. It's not an impossible product project to do at home, but it's definitely a little complicated. So it's pretty cool to uh, to see other people doing that. I like that a lot gives me some ideas for content. I've wanted to get into it for a long time and like a lot of skills. So like to put this into perspective, I thought hydrographics was going to be really difficult for the longest time. Uh, but then Tom of foam data services was just like, do it. If you do it, you'll be good at it. Or <laughs> that's not true. Actually, Tom was like, just do it, do it like this. Your first ones will be terrible, but then you'll get better at it. And he was right. Like, truth be told, we eventually got pretty good at it. Uh, that's the same advice that we gave uh, Jackie of Project FDL when she wanted to get into hydro dipping. I was like, just start. And uh, they have the tremendous advantage of not having to paint things first. So their, uh, their test pieces are always very low stakes, very easy, which is cool. Whereas when you muck up a, a big project in my workshop, you have to sand it back down quote unquote to the wood and uh, and get it down there so that you can uh, repaint it, re-clear it, then dip it. And that's that's always a little frustrating. So I kind of want to get into electroplating blasters. I think that it would be very easy to build a vat uh, down in the workshop. And then pretty soon uh, we have what I'm calling tentatively uh, on the work docket the Orlando job where we'll be building uh, sort of a rough copy, a slightly smaller version of our workshop uh, down in Orlando for a client, which is pretty exciting. It'll open up a lot of fun collaborations. So uh, other than that, we're headed to New York Comic Con again. Would love uh, if there's an exclusive that I should pick up. Let me know in the comments section down below if there's uh, an artist that is unusual to meet there. Like that could be cool as well. Uh, overall, I'm not super fond of a uh, of the very corporate nature of Comic Con as opposed to something like Dragon Con. Uh, which is still very fan owned and fan run, but um, it definitely opens up a lot of different opportunities in media, in pop culture, and they can be really cool, uh, particularly since they, they offer you a press pass, and so like, that's nice. Uh, plus it's an excuse to, to head up to, to Manhattan and, and run around there finding a, do you wanna go on Cannoli Quest part two? Mm -hmm. We might have to go on Cannoli Quest 2.0. Uh, and there will be some Twitch live streaming and, and some interesting stuff going on. So that's mostly this car talk. Uh, we could have turned it into a very long, drawn out, like, uh, the, the cost of integrity car talk because we've had a lot of time in the car to talk about that. It's a very personal and frustrating subject recently, but I think it'd be more fun to talk about New York Comic Con and cool stuff going on in Nerf. Uh, do we have... I mean, I guess RAG is coming up. That's pretty exciting. And, oh, I got my last topic. So RAG is coming up, and I want to make a news video about it, and I think that I will. Uh, Orange Modworks is, like, back with a vengeance. So a long, long time ago, when Orange Modworks was just getting its start, we helped them with a ton of their marketing and multimedia content. 
and they were just a really cool company and then their reputation got a little dicey as they failed to deliver some things and ran some very interesting like off-brand Kickstarters uh, but they seem to have recovered pretty flawlessly they've got their supply chain back in order they never really stopped delivering stuff and I mean they've had tremendous honors over the years uh, the head of the what is it the head of the F F C C the punchable face guy yeah, Ajit Paj. He had an Orange Modworks blaster in his video that was viewed by millions. And then uh, um, Adam Savage, who interestingly enough will be at New York Comic Con, uh, featured an Orange Modworks kit in one of his Nerf videos. So I'm really looking forward to those as well. If you've already seen those, I'd be happy to discuss them as well. But the Orange Modworks kits uh, are no longer kits. They're full blaster shells. It looks like they're going to have prototypes at RAG. And I think that there's talk of getting together and doing some sort of uh, some sort of dinner with the exciting people, and so uh, you know that your boy's gonna grab him in the parking lot and crank out some videos because uh, I, I gotta do it. I gotta I gotta find out. They're supposed to be half length AEGs. I'm really really excited for that. So uh, it's getting dark. Car talk video is probably gonna be over now, but uh, we we still do these. We did this one. We did one, um, and maybe we'll start taking Twitch streams and porting them over to the vlog channel. Let me know. Much love, Nerf Funder. Go.